here. Um, we're in the book of Acts. We're in chapter 13. Paul and Barnabas had just gone over into the little town of, called Salamis, and they were preaching something good. And a magician, a false prophet, a Jew named Bar Jesus, um, he didn't like what they were saying. Anyway, the town proconsul heard the word of God and wanted to hear the word of God. And, and this, this, this magician, his nickname was Eliamus, uh, he tried to pervert the proconsul from the faith. And uh, Paul was not having any of it. In the, and so he put a curse on this magician, this Bar Jesus, this Eliamus guy. Anyway, it scared the heck out of him. And, uh, but the, he went blind for a while. That's how serious this business was of, of trying to divert somebody from the faith, not just to have your own doubts about what God has accomplished and what God is doing, but to divert somebody else from the faith. That's some serious business anyway. But the pro-council, he starts believing in the Lord and he's astonished at the teaching of God. And we're up to verse 13, and that's where we're starting out right now. Okay, we'll title this one, Lucky Jews Get to Hear of Jesus' Resurrection Again. <laughs> See how they like it. Verse 13. Now setting out from Paphos, those about Paul came to Perga of Pamphylia. Yet John, departing from there, returns to Jerusalem. And, um, I'm, you know, John Mark, he's being silly here. He wants to go back to Jerusalem. I can't imagine why, because where, where Paul is is where the action is. Now they, passing through Perga, came along to Antioch, Poseidon, and entering into the synagogue the day of the Sabbath, they are seated. Now after the reading of the law and the prophets, the chief of the synagogues dispatched to them, saying, Men, brethren, if there is any word of entreaty for the people, say it. Now Paul, boy, he's got guts. Paul, rising and gesturing with his hand, said, Men, Israelites, and those who are fearing God, the God of this people, Israel, chooses our fathers. How lovely. The God of this people, Israel, chooses our fathers and exalts the people in the sojourn in the land of Egypt and with a high arm he led them out of it and for 40 years time he carries them as a nurse in the wilderness and pulling down the seven nations of the land of Canaan he distributes their land by lot. Hey see this word lot here? Back a couple of uh, sessions ago Tony spent a bit of time telling us about this thing lot that he distributes the land by lot and and pointed out that in, in Ephesians it says our lot is in Christ also he put an emphasis on the word also he anyway so we'll go back a couple of issues and see um, the interview with Tony brother Tony Verse 20, about 450 years, it all happened over about 450 years, and after this he gives judges until Samuel the prophet, and thence they request a king, bad news, these Jews request a king, man you get in trouble when you have a king, and God gives them Saul, a son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years, and, that, and disposing him, he rouses David for their king, to whom he said also in testifying, I found David of Jesse, a man according to my heart, who will be doing all my will. Well, isn't that something? Verse 23, from this one seed, God, according to the promise, led to Israel a savior, Jesus. Now he's launching, Paul is launching into bold territory here by, by recounting the history of Israel and telling them it's all pointing to this Savior Jesus whom that they had just crucified a few years earlier. Verse 24, 
The previous heralding of John before his personal entrance was the baptism of repentance for the entire people of Israel. Now, as John completed his career, he said, what you are suspecting me to be, I am not. But lo, coming after me is one, the sandal of whose feet I am not worthy to loose men, brethren, sons of the race of Abraham, and those among you who are fearing God. To us was the word of this salvation dispatched. Man, this is big language. To us was the word of this salvation dispatched for those dwelling in Jerusalem and their chiefs being ignorant of him, being ignorant of him and of the voices of the prophets, being ignorant of the voices of the prophets. He's telling these Jews that they were ignorant, ignorant of the voices of the prophets and they're operating out of ignorance. And I point this out Put a little emphasis on it because over on the other side of the room is a bunch of free willers and they think that we have everything we need to make a good decision and therefore we're going to go to heaven or hell based on our decision and there's plenty of evidence here in the book of Acts that, <clears throat> that the Jews killed Jesus out of ignorance. They were ignorant of, of him and they were ignorant of the voices of the prophets which are read on every Sabbath, fulfilled them. They fulfilled them in judging him. They fulfilled the voices of the prophets when they judged Christ and crucified him. Verse 28. And finding not one cause of death, they request Pilate to have him dispatched. Right? <clears throat> now as they accomplish all that which was written concerning him, taking him down from the pole, they place him in a tomb, yet God rouses him from among the dead. <coughs> yet God rouses him from among the dead, who was seen on more days by those who ascended with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are now witnesses to this people. And we are bringing you the evangel which comes to be a promise to the fathers. Oh, he's tying this together marvelously with what was going on in the Old Testament. It all comes to be as a promise to the fathers that God has fully fulfilled this for our children in raising Jesus as it is written in the second Psalm. My son thou art today I have begotten thee. Verse 34, now seeing that he raises him from among the dead by no means longer about to return to decay, he has thus declared, I shall be giving you the faithful benignities of David. Wherefore, in a different place also, he is saying, wilt thou be giving thy benign one to be t acquainted with decay? For David indeed subserving his own generation by God's counsel, was put to repose and was added to, to his fathers and was acquainted with decay. In other words, God didn't raise David from the dead, but he did raise Christ from the dead. Yet, he whom God rouses was not acquainted with decay. Let it be known to you then, men, brethren, that through this one is being announced to you the pardon of sins and from all from which you could not be justified in the law of Moses. In this one, everyone who is believing is being justified. Now, verse 40. Beware then that that which has been declared in the prophets may not be coming on you. Perceive you despisers and marvel and disappear for a work I am I doing for a work am I working in your days, a work which you should by no means be believing if anyone should not be detailing it to you. That's a interesting little sentence. You wouldn't be believing this should anyone be detailing it to you. You should by no means be believing if anyone should be detailing it. And here Paul is detailing it to them. Okay, verse 42. And now, at their being out, they entreated that these declarations be spoken to them on the intervening Sabbath. Now, on the 
Now the synagogue, having broken up, many of the Jews and their reverent proselytes follow Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to remain in the grace of God. Now, on, on the coming Sabbath, almost the entire city was gathered to hear the word of, of the Lord. Yet the Jews, perceiving the throngs, are filled with jealousy, and they contradicted the things spoken by Paul, blaspheming. Be, being bold, both Paul and Barnabas say, To you first was it necessary that the word of God be spoken, yet since, in fact, you are thrusting it away, and are judging yourselves not worthy of Ionian life. Lo, we are turning to the nations. Oh my goodness, do you hear this, brothers and sisters? This is the key point of the whole book of Acts, is a key point anyway. Paul determines he's going to turn to the nations because the Jews just won't hear it. Verse 47, For thus... The Lord has directed us, I have appointed thee for a light to the nations, for a light of the nations, for thee to be, for the salvation as far as the limits of the earth. Now on hearing this, the nations rejoice, the nations rejoice, the Gentiles, the bad boys in this town rejoice. They had not been converted to Judaism before. They rejoice and glorify the word of the Lord, and they believe whosoever were set for life Ionian. Now you see that verse? This is, this is wonderful. <clears throat> so whoever was set for life Ionian, they believe. And how did they get set for life Ionian? This is the work of God. He did it before the eons were created. Whoever were set for life Ionian, they believe. 49. Now the word of the Lord was carried through the whole country, yet the Jews spur on the reverent and respectable women and the foremost ones of the city and rouse up persecution for Paul and Barnabas, and they reject them from their boundaries. Now they, shaking the dust off their feet against them, came to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and Holy Spirit. Wow. Things are getting hot and heavy. The Jews get to hear about the resurrection of Christ. And they don't like it. They don't like what it means. And Paul clearly smacks them in the face and says, From now on, we're going to the nations. Because we've, we've presented this message to you enough and you keep rejecting it. Not only did you reject the prophets, you couldn't even hear the prophets even though you sit in the Sabbath every, every Sabbath and you're supposedly listening to the prophets, but you don't hear. You, you listen, but you don't hear. So we're going to turn to the nations. And now, brothers and sisters, it's going to get heavy. We're going to start chapter 14 next and see where this thing goes it is going to get heavy because paul and barnabas are heading out to talk to the gentile boys and girls and they're going to bring the message of christ's resurrection and all that it means to the gentile boys and girls and this is not going to sit well with the jews not only do they reject Christ and the resurrection, but they don't even want the Gentiles to hear about it. Oh man, it's complicated, huh? Anyway, good morning and grace to you. Leave a comment, tell me where you think we should go in this, in our thinking with this matter, and where you have, in, have received some insight. Let's have it, because uh, this stuff is is wonderful and, and a bit complex, and I love it. Amen, and grace to you.